All right, hey, continue on with more of the file system stuff here for the OS dev. I put some comments because I changed some really obvious conditions after I looked at it a bit this morning. So we'll, uh, we'll continue on with these things. I'll have these fixes here first to go over, and then we'll probably make printing out a directory work a little bit better and move on to maybe the other syscalls or testing the open syscall, see if it actually makes files, and maybe debugging that. We'll see. See where we go with this. But as far as things that I changed, in a few places here in the implementation for the file system, some of these functions here, like inode for the name and directory. So a lot of these conditions I had starting a block at the first block in an extent and going until the length in blocks, but I set it to the first block and then just checked if it was less than the length. And that for pretty much all of these is probably going to not be true and the loop is not going to do anything. <laughs> if we start at block 20 and the length is 2, 20 is greater than 2, the condition would never have went through. So, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> we can set it to first block plus the length in blocks, and that works like I did here for this one. Or we could have a separate function, um, or, well, a separate condition that has, like, 0 up until the length in blocks, and then when I load it, I would have whatever number we're at plus the first block, essentially. And that might be easier to read. I'm not sure. Right now, I just went with this as far as changing the condition to just do the first block plus the length. And I did that for a few of these. So this is within, well, probably further down in create file, I guess. Yeah. Got line 415 here. So the first block I had less than the length, and now I need to do less than the first block plus the length for the temp extent. Otherwise, yeah, same as the other thing. It would not have been true, but I could change this to read a little better, I guess. That might be easier. We can set this to, I could still be UN32, I guess. I don't really know. We could set J to zero and then do less than the length. And then when we're, when we're reading and writing, I'm not using J down here. Well, I am down here. I'd have to change it a little bit, but we could change the condition around. So let's say instead of this, let's put J equal to zero. And we'll just do less than the length in blocks, which is kind of similar to what I wanted to do here to begin with. So instead of doing J times sector, where we're starting to read from on the disk, we would have to do temp extent dot first block plus J times the sector. That would be the, the equivalent condition here, just offsetting from this up to the length times the sectors. I think that would be equivalent here. And then we'd have to change the one down here to be similar. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep what I had. So I'm pretty sure it worked. So first block plus the length in blocks. All right. Other than that, I have another condition in print directory where I changed to do that. And that's how I found out it wasn't working because I tried the directory function and it just printed like directory S. But that was also for a different thing I'll look at in a second. But this was the other part of that error. I had to do first plus the length, not just first and then less than the length. That would not be true. So just change the conditions here for these. Um, after printing out the directories, I think I typed this all up last time, right? Yeah, printing the name, reading the inode, printing some inode info, which is not necessarily correct, but I'll change that in a second. Instead of just putting a new line, I need to put slash r slash n because I'm not converting n to both. So that was the last thing I did there. More files there. And then I had one thing in the kernel. And that was where I'm checking when the commands are gotten. Right after the loop where we sort of naively tokenize things. Delimited by one white space. Kind of convert it to space delimited and set the argv, argc values. Checking if it's directory. I'm changing this to print the directory. And I was checking... <laughs> I just need to check if argv is null. I think I was checking argv10 to see if that was null. I mean, that would probably also work, but since the argv values are all being mem set to zero here, the pointer itself for any of those is going to be null. So I can just check directly if argv1 is null. Because it's going to be if there is nothing put in there from this line here. So assuming that's null, we don't have at least a second or third or fourth or whatever argument. And I don't want to print the root directory necessarily. I should print the current directory. <laughs> and I changed this to take in a string, and I think I was passing like an inode or something, and that's not that's not really correct. So <laughs> just pass the current directory, which is a string. 
which I set when I initialize the variables. It starts out at root, so that'll go ahead and send root. And we'll just say, hey, we're printing this directory. Otherwise, we're printing argv1 and checking if that works. So that's all I'm doing to print the directory here, at least from the kernel. But if it's all read correctly, then we should see, you know, all the files that are in root, which should be about 11 files. This is what happens currently because I haven't fixed the formatting. But we do have directory, and so I should have an initial new line pretty much, but then it prints a dot, which is a directory, it prints the size and the date, and the reference count, which is how many things have it open, which right now is zero. Probably should be zero for all of these. But we have these, I mean, we could technically say this current directory is open and it would be one, but I haven't put that in, so. It's just the name, if it's a directory or not, the size and bytes, and the date. So I'm going to fix the formatting here. I think that would be good to start with. So I'll go ahead and do that, and that's here, print directory. I do want to print a new line to start off with, most likely, or I can print one to start each of the file names. That might be easier. Then I don't have to think about it, it's already there. Fixed width would be good with left to right adjust, but that's okay. So if I just, just do that, print the name, a space, directory, space, and these things. I guess that'll be all right. That might be all we need to do, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's easy enough. Just add a new line. <laughs> I should get rid of the underscore when we... Well, the cursor when we press enter. I should fix that as well. But this is all in the current directory, which is defaulted to root. So this is everything in the root directory. And dot and dot dot for root both point to itself. So these are both root. 704 should be each one of these entries times 64, so the number, that's 11. So 11 times 64, is that 704, maybe? Possibly it is, so we're good, all right. So the math works out. And these are just the sizes and the dates. I thought I was funny, so yeah. <laughs> Got the 420 blaze it as the date, and that's everything there. I should go on to make, you know, directories and everything, but I want to make sure that opening a file works correctly so that the fs create file function works. So I do want to test that. I might see what's setting this. The cursor is not disappearing when we press enter as well, which is not great. I might look at that. As well as changing the prompt. So the prompt is just this. I'm going to get rid of the colon actually on the prompt, so it's just a a greater than sign there. And when we print the prompt, I want to print whatever current directory we're in. Otherwise I can make like a, I'm not gonna do a PS1 or the special PS2, you know, those prompt things. And right now I don't wanna make another command that I don't have to to keep it simple. So instead of a PWD print working directory command, which all that would do, would probably just call printf and print the current directory string. I'm just gonna add that in here whenever we print the prompt. So, I can do that, I guess, before the prompt, which would be here. I can print it before then. I'll just have percent %s, percent %s, I guess. That would be fine. We can print current directory, and that is a string. I might give it a different name, because current directory inode is a little confusing if you don't remember that. So that should both be an impl. Yeah, it's a little confusing, because this is a string, and this is the inode for that but current directory is the string that has the name. So I should be able to print the name in the prompt and have that work. And it should just print a slash, there we go. So later when I do change directory or something, it doesn't matter, whenever we, whenever we return to take input here, it should have whatever the full name is, assuming that works. And we, I guess for change directory, we would just concatenate on the end of this, whatever folder we're moving to. So if I did like CD, well, CD dot shouldn't do anything. Plus, I, I don't have a CD command, but yeah, just wanted to print that there. So where is the enter key being gotten? That's here. I do set this off. And then it breaks. I guess it doesn't print a space or something. I can print a backspace at the end after I do enter. I don't know. Because it may be after cursor off, it's still printing. That may be the issue there. It would be under terminal when we write stuff. 
when I do cursor off, it says false, it skips, it doesn't continue, but it does down here. That's interesting. I guess it goes on though, and the string doesn't end. But we don't have a line feed. We do have a carriage return. So that should go enter as well. So I don't really know. It shouldn't be going on here. If I do a command, it shouldn't be going on, so it shouldn't be printing this cursor value. I don't know why it is. Because it should disappear when we press enter. But it's not. I feel like that's in terminal right. I'm not absolutely sure. The show cursor is false. And this is only drawn if show cursor is true, which is static bool, but we do set it to false on cursor off, so. I'm not sure exactly. Draw cursor. I could set that above all of this so it's not doing it anyway. That might be better. You can only do this if show cursor is on, and then I wouldn't have to check down here, and we wouldn't even attempt to draw it. That would probably be better. I would think that would be better. We just do all this here. Yeah, so only draw the cursor if show cursor is on. Making it static, making it Boolean, should be affecting that. So it still draws it, though. Interesting, okay. It could be optimized out or something as well, something with compilation, I'm not sure. So I do cursor on, I draw it, of course, take an input, I set off, and then nothing, break. If I do a space there, what happens there? This is not what I wanted to get into, but I'm curious. So printing a space gets rid of it, okay. That kind of overwrites it there at the end. I might just go with that because that's a very easy thing <laughs> to, uh, to change there, so that's fine. That's not necessarily correct. There's still no memory leaks there. Okay. Well, that's all right. So directory now works again, right? We can print a directory. So what else do I want to do? Not look at empty email. So I did that. Print rn to end. I did change for that. Print directory. Okay. Assuming that's all good. Prints wherever we're at currently. Change directory prompt. We could see if it works with um, passing the right string to it, though. If we pass it a different directory, we could see if that works. Just command dir. So if it does argv, it should print argv1. Right now, the only thing we have to check with that is dot and dot dot, because we don't have other directories. I could pass it something. Oh, I could say directory editor.bin. It should say, yeah, error printing, because it's not a directory file type. I should be able to give directory dot dot, and it gets the inode for that, which right now is just the root directory. But at least that does work if we give it one of those. So until I make a folder, then we can't really test that, but... Better than nothing, right? <laughs> Change prompt, I did do that. We could do close read, we could do make and change, which would probably be more interesting, but I'm not sure even open works. I guess I could do that, we could test open. We could make a, uh, I don't know, let's say we have a test command. Just do command test. And we'll just say test, or we could do Maybe open test, that's fine. Be mostly for debugging here. Debugging, but may keep. So command directory is the first one here. Let's just copy that, put it below. This would be command. I didn't call it command open test, did I? Just open test. Get rid of that. I 
Okay. So for that, we'll test open. It should just be in syscall wrappers, which I think I have up there. Yep. So that is... We just give it a file path and flags. So let's say we have a new file. It should just be put in the current directory. I guess I'm not checking that, but we can test it like with relative directories, right? If we do stuff like that. But let's just see if it makes it in the current one right now. And we'll say, oh, create. So it should make a new file, but it probably won't because I probably have a bunch of bugs. But we'll just see what that does. And I should probably also test if, it, if a file already exists with the name and handle that because I don't think I'm doing that. But uh, I could say if this returns, if it's greater than negative one or not equal to negative one, that's how my errors are for this right now. Then it did work. Uh, created, well, created file percent %s, we'll say. And this would be new file.txt. Now let's all put error, could not create file, okay. We'll just have that there. Test open syscall. I would be extremely surprised if it worked, so I doubt it's going to work. And we get a page fault, so that does make sure that it doesn't. It does not work. That's okay. Or A7. I mean, I didn't really expect much different, to be honest. I did call it open, open test all lowercase. Yeah, okay. So, let's just see if we go to syscall wrappers here. It's called numbers is where the flags are defined, but should put the results within there. B is the file path. Okay, I could give it also explicit root. I'm not sure if I need to. But we do have no create, which is one. So really for these, I looked it up and read, read only, it should be something like read only is one, write only is two, and read write is three so that you can't, you know, cross these and they're only... <laughs> you shouldn't be able to or these, right, to make another one. So I can do that, and that's fine. Let's do read only as one. We'll do write only as two. So we can't, you know, we can't or these together and make a number. Well, we can make three, but... I don't remember. Maybe it was zero, one, and two instead of one, two, and three. Because you could or one and two and make three. So I'm not exactly sure. I can look it up because I don't I don't really remember. <laughs> Which is not great. So it should only be one of those three is allowed. Where we have a path flag or truncate. Uh yes. The low order two bits, so zero, one, and two is what they're defined as. Read, read only, write only, read, write is zero, one, and two. So you can't or, well, you can or read and write only, but that won't equal read, write. It would only equal one. That makes sense. So, speed numbers. Yes, yeah, so we'll do zero, one, and two. Create can be some other flags for. And this can be a, I think I got rid of one. No, because I did two, four, eight, sixteen. Yeah, so this can be eight, this can be sixteen. Okay. It's still not gonna work, it'll still page fault. I just wanna see and verify that. Yep, okay. And I don't put it in the background because I keep forgetting. So syscalls, 
So what is the issue here that we got with this? Probably a lot. So we don't have an inode. This should be zero. It should go here. Flags in OCreate. It should return, I would think. It should be zero and one. We can check that, however, if it reaches this point. Not flags in OCreate. Let's say, I'll just put it here. Just put dead beef there, see if we get there or not. We get a page fault before that point, that's always good. Does this say where that's at? Well, I mean, it's at 4A7, I know that. 200. Hmm, I probably have a pointer that's going through that's not correct. That's usually what that means for me when these things happen. So a pointer that I would be passing through would be the file path. So somewhere that's not being set correctly or it's not being transferred correctly somewhere. And since it happens before this point, let's just see if it happens by default regardless. Does it even reach, does it even reach the syscall? It does reach the syscall. Is EAX is dead beef there? Okay. Got a binary search, our errors here, that's always fun. Is it where I'm getting the inode from the file path? Because I'm passing that as a pointer there and I'm not setting a new one. No, that still works. Is it if I do directory first and then I do that? No, that still works, okay. So that would mean the inode is not zero. So I wonder what this is returning, because that would explain that, because I don't get to this point, right? Let's just make sure. Yes, okay. That means the inode must not be zero. And it's going down to here, and it's trying to get things, and probably something, something below there is not working either. So it's not reaching this point. Okay, so that would be inode from path. Get a position. I do say it's constant. Maybe that's an issue. It's passing the, val the value of that pointer to that path. It does not start with a root, so it sets to the current directory. And it's just new file.txt is all I'm doing there. It could be messing up with this because I do check for a dot, but I have .txt. So I guess if something ends in a dot, that might come up later where that's wrong. We'll see. But this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. So it should be new file.txt. That should be the name. Inode for name and directory. That would not be true. I mean, this should not return anything. Return current inode. I can check, though, maybe. I can check what value we get there. Just put this under here. So for B, let's get the address of file inode so we can check the values within it. Just in case, because we shouldn't have anything there. It should be, you know, bad. <laughs> the file doesn't exist. It shouldn't return an inode there. The file does not exist. So EBX is this. If I print, I don't know, 10 things at that address. You know, the first double word is one, which is true. If I look at the inode, the inode definition here, inode T, the first four, the first double word is ID. 
Did that return one? Well, that's not good because <laughs> one should not be true there. I know from path file path. Oh, is it because I'm setting the current directory I know to root? That would probably be why. Yeah, that is definitely bad. That's a bug. Maybe it should set this. I return current inode. It does set it to root initially because the current directory is pointing at root initially. That should not be one, it should be zero. Those should not be true. It should go down here. Inode for name and directory. Position equals temp. So what is this? Current inode. The current inode would be root and we'd have name. So I'm looking through all of these. We didn't find it. I'm returning zero here. So that would mean I'm returning this, which should not be true. Because the file doesn't exist. Maybe it goes through anyway. I don't know. This would this would be where a debugger would come in handy, but I don't know how to use GB for this <laughs> GDB for this. It should return zero data there in this spot, but it's not. It's interesting. Can I go back to nope? Sys calls. Got a bunch of loud crows outside. That's nice. Or whatever the birds are. Yeah, let's see if we can fix this inode from path. If the if the file doesn't exist here, I mean these should not be true. Or I mean this will be. That won't be true for root. This will be true. It'll set it to root. But I think this is returning root for some reason, which is making this all go bad. Of course, I can see if that happens if it gets down to this point. So let's see if that's true, where we call this. This can be, uh, this can be beef dead. Beef, beef dads. <laughs> that's, that's kind of weird, but whatever. We'll say, we'll say it's there so we know we reached this point. Can I just do XP or X, XP or something? I don't remember. There's a way to just print one. I guess it's just maybe just X. Cannot access memory. Well, it's that is correct though. P E A X. Yeah. Just print the value there. So we got there, which is good. So it is getting to this point here. So temp is position, position is zero. That should be where it equals this anyway. File.txt, which is what I'm calling it. Yeah, new file.txt. So this should be root. Position equals temp. Temp was the original character there, set it to null, set it to the original, return this. I guess because it's returning the current inode. I mean, that's being set to root, so it is from name and directory. If it doesn't find it, it should return zero, which means it's getting to this point. Which I don't see why it would be. If we go through everything and the ID is zero, I guess maybe there could be uninitialized data or something on the disk and this is not zero. That would probably be it. Am I checking the name? I am checking the name here. While string compare is not zero, 
So it could be, and then this would not be true. I'll just do this. We'll do or string in compare directory entry name to the file name passed in to string length of the file name passed in. Not equals zero. We'll just check the name and if the if it has a valid file ID. So if we didn't find the name, then we know that file's wrong. So we shouldn't go on and load it because it's not going to be correct. All right, so that looks like that worked better. It has this data, so if we print at that data, maybe it is XP, I don't remember. There's a way to just print one. There we go, it's, it's a zero. Or we can print 10, 10 double words there, so that's all zero, okay. Yeah, I just had to make sure the name equaled. That makes sense. <laughs> make sure we actually found the right name. It could be a file that doesn't have the right name or it's at the end of the data that we found or otherwise the memory's initialized to something that isn't just zeros. So th this could be a value, a value that's not zero, but it could be we didn't find a file or the file we did find is not correct. We don't want to load that one. We want to load other ones. So if we did find it, yes, we want to load it, but if not, we don't, so okay. That makes sense for a bad explanation. So that should allow it to go on to here. If flags, if we didn't pass O create, we should have an error. Otherwise we should make it not create file at path, but we'll see. I guarantee I have at least some more errors in that open syscall. Could not create file, right? So if I do dir again, just to make sure it did not make a new one, but this did not have, did not make the file. So now I have to go and sort of binary search by printing out breakpoints and see where we're at with that. And that's why testing takes a while because I don't know how to debug, but we know this did not work. Oh, this, uh, yeah, if it didn't equal negative one else could not. Just put that so the error looks a little bit better. I'm assuming it did create it, but I can check if it reached this point after file inode here. Do this, just get that back so I can put it there to get the inode. We'll see what create file returned if the inode is a uh, create file. Create file return the inode or does it return the FD number? It wouldn't return FD. So that's a dumb question. Yeah, it returns the inode at the end. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming some other stuff in there is gonna be bad, so. We'll just take the address of that, see what the value is again. That did get dead beef. It's still returning the same one here. The data at EBX is all zeros. Okay. So if it's all zeros and the ID is zero and it did not create it, so that would be in create file. So the parent inode from path, I guess we could check if that makes something. Maybe that's a zero, I don't know. We could check that first. And see where that's getting stuff. The last slash, there is not one. So that would be a null, <laughs> actually. And that would just end with a null probably, which would not be great, which would be that, restore root. Position equals string R character. Yeah, that would be an issue. So we're searching for a slash. Does not equal that. Return result, which would be zero, probably, because it wouldn't return.
Um, let me just put that in here. That seems like a bug if it's not going to find it. So if we didn't find it, if not position, then I probably just want to do this again. Just set it to the initial path. I don't know why it goes all the way out there. It makes me mad. Just go there. If it didn't find the last directory, just do that. If string like the zero, return root. Result is inode from path, starting path. So I would have done that, and then we'll restore the name. So I probably don't want to do that. If there is no last thing there, actually, I can just return probably the current directory, which would be the parent inode. Yes, there was no slash. Okay. No slashes in path, turn current directory. Parent, I'll just say the parent. Parent is the current directory. Assume to be, if the user didn't make an error. So if they give, I guess if they give that, it'd be true as well. But if they give something like new file, right, that's going to be assumed to be in the current directory that you're calling this from. So we'll, re we'll return that. What if they do something like this? We would find the slash, place it with a null. We'd get these two dots. String length is not zero. Result is inode from path, starting path. Which would just be these two dots, and then we'd restore it. I think that would work with the dots. Or this. If it was just this way, it wouldn't. Because inode from path checks for the current directory anyway. And then if we're doing a dot, or we're doing a dot dot, it does set it for that. Okay. I'm assuming that all works, so hopefully it does. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that would be checking if this actually created a file. Let's see. Let's see with that fix what happens. Doesn't do anything. Because I did not take out the dead beef, but this is at a different address. And we have root. Okay, so it did find the root there. I don't remember where I put that in though. So I gotta like jump back and find. Did I put debug it in here? Okay, when I'm creating the file. So it did get the parent inode, it got root correctly. So that's a bug fix, that's good. And if, it, if it's one, then this will not happen. This should not happen. I guess I could do that first though, before we get the inode. This should probably happen first. So let me keep that text there. Before we do actual stuff, let's do the guard clause. <laughs> okay. So this will not be true. We get the last name in the path, the file name, which should be our name that we just gave. We can see if we make it to this point, or I can just see if it's still page faults if we need to keep debugging. That would be good. Okay, could not create the file. And it did not make it anyway, okay. Let's see if we go here. File name is the last name in path. Let's see if it got that maybe. We can check if it got the file name correctly. Did not create new file. Oh, it didn't even get to that point. Okay. Which would mean it did not get last name and path. Nice. So this, if it's position, it goes up. This would be null, so it would return zero. Yes. We should have a check there as well. <laughs> this is good. I'm checking everything in the current directory. This, it's good to find bugs like this. I mean, it's not the best, probably, content to watch, but 
They're obvious mistakes, and that's okay. And slashes in path, assumed, current directory. So we would just return the path then. I mean, it could start with like, you know, dots or dot dots, but it's not, it's not like this. There's no slash. So it's just this. It's not even slash root. It's just this. We would just return the path that they gave. That's fine. Of course, that would be returning a pointer from a constant, which is not great, but that is okay. Assume current directory. Return given path. With position plus plus. I guess that's why we have this. Yeah, we can do that. So if position, if it's not a position, we would just return path, yeah. Maybe we'll do this. Or we could return position plus one, <laughs> really. Which is probably not a great thing to do. That's okay. That would be equivalent. All right. Return discards const. That is true. I'll fix that in a second. Okay. That didn't go on that time. C8123. So this should be the file name. I should be able to print like. Well, new file.txt is what? Like 10 characters? So we'll, we'll see 10 characters there. Yeah, there we go. New file.txt. And then of course it reads further into memory, which isn't great, but. We did get the file name at that point. For this, so that is good. I should fix that. Return a pointer plus one, otherwise return whatever. Character pointer path. It's the same thing, but that would get rid of that error. So after we get the file name, I'll see if it still errors first. Okay, it goes on forever in page faults, yeah, okay. <laughs> it does go on from that point, though. And this way I get to see, hey, where everything fails. I just have to go every few lines and see where it page faults, and then we get to see, you know, where, th where the magic happens. So it's not there. Seemed like it had a loop somewhere that didn't work. Yeah. Just give one gap there. Find the next free one. We'll see if it's... I don't know. We'll go, we'll go down here. <laughs> Let's just see if it happens before this point. Like I said, binary searching for errors, right? So it doesn't happen at that point. Okay. The new should not be greater, so it really shouldn't do that. It should at least go down here. And I know I'm still hitting it. Because we have dead beef and EAX. Read right sector, so it might be this loop here. Because it looked like it was a loop because it ran for a second before it did a, a, a page fault. But maybe not. Maybe setting breakpoints changes the, well, the, the equivalent of breakpoint, I guess. Changes the compilation to where it optimizes certain things and it doesn't work. Or I missed that I had to save the file and it did work to begin with, but I don't think that's true. Could be an update superblock. 
Could be when we return from this function. Of course. Because we're not getting an issue there. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> it's always fun. I'm in the right one. Yeah, I can create file. Okay, well, it would be an open then. So create file might actually work. We'll include syscalls. Yes, where I'm in open. Okay, so let's see after it makes the file, which should be here. We can check the inode. Let's do that. We'll see what we get. It's good to know that at least it doesn't crash within the create file function. Just dead beef. And we have EBX. Okay, so it makes B. It makes an ID of B. So these both should have file ID 1. We should have probably 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So yes, the next file that is new added to this directory and the next available position in the inode bitmaps would be 11 because this is 2 through 10. Next one is B, which is 11. So that ID does look correct. So that's good to verify at least. So yeah, it would probably be looking through the open inode table and stuff is not, uh, not working correctly, which makes sense. Let's search for an inode. Well, we're less than the max, and we haven't found the file, so that will not happen. It will equal the max, actually. If it already exists, it will not. File is not an inode table. But it could be beyond memory to where the inode ID is like, they shouldn't match, but possibly it could, depending how the memory is initialized there. Although I think we mem set to zero, so hopefully that's not true. Find the first open spot in the table. Okay, yeah, let's see if it hits this point first. That's one of the loops that it could be occurring in. So it's not there. Should go here. Search for a first open spot. This should not be true. It should set it. Current open inodes. We can check here. So one open inode. Yeah, because it would be the file we just opened. So that's good. It should set the data within the inode thing there. But possibly the file table doesn't work. Well, the address is not equal to zero. We could set the index to a two to begin with as well. Whatever the current open files is. I could do that because we don't want to overwrite standard in out error later. So we could initialize this to current open files. Or at least to, yeah, we can just hard code to, to two. Zero, one, two. And that will not be less than the max. Is our max open file? Yeah. Max would be like 256 or whatever to start off. The address probably is zero, however, right at two. So we probably do want to start this at three, actually. But the entry is not at that position. So open file table. Let's do this, temp ft entry plus equal three, and this equals three. And this would be the same text there. 
Okay, and then we'll check. So that way it would point to a valid one that should have zero. But we'll check just to make sure. So EVX should be three. Okay, that's good. It should not equal the max open files, but we should have plus plus. The current open files I did set to three, so it should be four, and it should stop at this point. Or whatever I set it to. It'll either be three or four. Yeah, it's four, okay. So FD should be four as well. But we'll see. One of these things is a loop that doesn't work. <laughs> Otherwise it would have returned, right? Or it might have been trying to return a pointer somewhere that I'm not seeing yet. That's still, there we go. That doesn't work. Okay. So this doesn't work. Allocating the pages. And I am messing with addresses, so that's probably why. We're trying to map pages, which... Allocate page should be valid for physical. We should have valid virtual addresses, but maybe we don't. But that's the whole point of mapping the page. Pointer to the next available virtual address. And this is... Next turn, yeah, so that should be fine. And that is at, what, one gig I set that to? This virtual doesn't really matter. We'll have the 32-bit address space, which goes up to four gigs. That's when we initialize. And I call open. Our open test is way after we initialize. That's, yeah, before all that, okay. So 4 million or 40 million, whatever one gig is. We get an initial, an initial pointer to there, which I do increment, which does show the changes back there. That should add plus 4K each time. That should be okay. So our physical address, we're allocating a page for a new thing every time. If not map, FD is negative one break. So this doesn't happen. It does this. We get bytes to blocks because the block size is the page size. Given the inode size and bytes, that should be zero, should it not? So maybe it doesn't map any because it's a new file, it doesn't have a size. The bytes to blocks may be zero. That may be the issue. And that would make sense. If bytes is zero, return zero. So do I set a default size when I make a new file? Probably not. When I create the file. I mean, the, the size will be zero, but typically on stuff like Windows and Linux, if you make a new file, it's more so on Windows, when it actually does write to disk eventually, because it defers that until needed, I believe. But if you have a blank file or it only has a couple bytes in it, the file size will be like 0 or 5 or 10. But the size on disk that you see, you know, go to properties of it. The size on disk will say some multiple of your page size usually. It'll say like 4096, even if the file is really tiny. They might do it differently nowadays with NTFS. I think used to with FAT, it, uh, it worked like that. But So where am I setting the size? I'm probably not because I set all this to 0. I increase the size of the directory the file's going into, but I don't think I actually affect the size to it. As we get the type and the timestamp, first length, no, the size is zero. Okay, that's probably why. So if the size is zero, then our loop here where we're allocating never goes through. And what does that mean? We cannot load the file to the address. I'm assuming <laughs> the offset is zero. That's fine. That should still work though. I don't think it would go through just in case, but I can add a thing here. I'll just set it to one just in case. 
reserve one page by default for new empty files. We'll do that. And then we'll see if it goes down here. Probably won't. Nope, still get a page fault. Nice. But I know it doesn't break. It should only go through once. I'm not sure what the issue is here. It would be in map page, I suppose. Void pointer to the address and the physical, which is here, which is an allocate page. It might be an issue in the memory manager. It shouldn't be. We'll see. Does it really happen at this point? I can find out. Yeah, that does an error. <laughs> so EBX is three. Ooh, maybe EBX needs to be four. It shouldn't be three. Current open files. Well, yeah, it would be three, because zero, one, two, it would, it would go to three. That's true. We could check what the address is there. Temp FT entry address. Type all of it in. Yeah, so that's right. That's right. So what is the issue here? Size and pages <laughs> should be one. Maybe it's not. That is not one. Oh, yeah, that would be an issue, wouldn't it? That's a giant number. That would be an issue. It's trying to allocate everything in the world. So why, why is that? Bytes to blocks. Inode size bytes. What inode am I pointing to? The inode should be temp inode, which is a pointer. Not equal file node ID. It's not open yet. But we should add it to the table. The table index is the max open. Yeah, well, the ID not equal zero. We should find that. Mem copy. We should just set this. We did make the file because we have the inode ID of 11. We should set that data at the temp inode. Let me see what I get for, for this value here. If I can do copy and paste correctly, which I can't. I just want to do V, not C. <laughs> I'm not typing correctly. Just put a P in there. I don't care. I'm getting annoyed. All right, what's EBX? A big giant number. Now, why is it that big giant number? Because we're getting some data there. Inode dereferenced because it's a pointer. Because we set it up here, do we not? Wait, where is this at? That's only if it's max open. That's probably why. If it equals max open, then we're setting out the data. Otherwise, I'm getting like random crap in memory. Is that why? Am I never setting that? Because that's a real oversight. We're going through the inode table. We make it if it doesn't exist. 
while it's less than max open files. It equals max open files. So this equals the open file table plus the max, which is the original. Otherwise, it'll equal wherever is in the file table. Yeah, because it equals the start. Okay. Or temp entry. Yeah, we just need to move this. Yeah, it would not have been set. <laughs> that's why. Because the max open file, the current open files in this point would probably be one, and that's much less than the max of 256 or whatever. So all the data would be zero. And if you're trying to dereference data at zero, I don't have precautions in place for that. So yeah, we would get just garbage memory, which that makes sense. This inode was not pointing here. It was pointing to some random garbage or just zero. And dereferencing that zero as if it was an inode gave a wrong value for the size because there would just be garbage there. So hopefully this would work now. So I'm setting it after. And then I'm setting the address here. So EBX is zero. Yeah, the file size is zero. Okay, that looks better. Yeah, <laughs> that does look better. So it would set these things. We could see if the inode actually has a value as well. And just to make sure, do I need to set these things to zero or will they already be set? It'll be set here. And the open file table by default will be mem set to zero when it's initialized and malloced. I guess it would be within close. It's not gonna be with an open. Within close, when we close a file, I suppose the file table entry would be mem set to zero in here somewhere. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about that in open. That's separate. Let's see if we have an inode value for something. Which is temp ft entry dereference to get inode. All right. Yeah, we have a we have data there. Okay, and it's offset from three meg, which is where the open file table is malloc. So that is correct. Okay. All right, and then that should allocate one page and set it here and return the FD. Let me just keep that there for a second. Let's see if we actually get an FD made. Oh, okay, cool. Create. I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna freeze in page fault. Created file. Hey, that's awesome. Call directory again. Oh, I don't see it. But the file size did increase. But this did not. And we're reading what the directory inode, which is probably just in memory because it's a um, a variable, <laughs> a global or local or whatever. I like that we made a file. That's awesome. That opens up a whole world of possibilities for files. <laughs> Literally the whole world, because we couldn't make it before. So an FS impl. That would be this that we're reading, correct? When we go to print. If we type the right file. Which I can never do. Source. Command. Print directory. Nope. Just directory. Always got to get the uh, case right. Current directory. Okay. Inode from path should be the current directory, which is just root. So we get the root inode. Should we have the root inode? Directory type is not, file type directory returned false. It gets, this gets the path first. It would just be the root. Otherwise it'd be current, which is also the root in this case, but that would mean that those are not being updated, I guess. They should be updated though. The file size increased. I know that that part worked. I'm just, I'm wondering if there's a disconnect within like updating the root or the current directory, if I need to update that somewhere after creating a file. 
That's what I'm thinking. Because I should have written it to like the data blocks, right? That would make sense. It should print out the info for the file. So that would be all within the data blocks. Or the directory. So, okay. But I write the data blocks, don't I? I update inode blocks for the inode. I should write a data block for the new file. Do I not do that? I probably don't. I set the bit as in use. I don't think I actually write the data <laughs> for the new file. That's not good. Or do I do that here? Well, that's just the inode blocks. Then we update the parent directory. Update data block for parent. This is what should add the file name, which I don't know if that's working. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. This should actually add the data there. Less than total. Maybe we went through all of the entries and did not add it. We have the size bytes here. Do I update? I update the size before this point though, right? Yeah, I update the size before that point. So that should have enough size for the new one. It's not equal to zero, else we found an empty spot, which should be at the end, hopefully. And it should add that there, but maybe that's not adding it there. We can see. Um, I don't have, yeah, I still have the debug save, good. We'll just see if we get to this point. But I also want to add in to <laughs> actually write a blank block of data where I'm supposed to on the disk. Although I'm not writing to it because the file isn't, the file is made, but it hasn't been written to. So maybe I don't have to worry about that here. And that would save some disk IO because we're not going to write anything anyway, but zeros. But if we actually go and write like through the write syscall and update the disk, then that would overwrite the data anyway. So I probably don't need to write disk blocks for the for the new file that's just been created because there's nothing in there yet. So never mind. But we can see if we get to this point. I just want to get this working. It says create, and we didn't, but yeah, we Pause there. Dead beef. Okay. So it does find a spot, which means it does write. Write with retry. Into that block. Because we found a spot to write to. Okay. And then we update the super block. Which that's correct, right? Yeah, because we set it to there and then we write it to disk. Yes. Super block address, disk sector. The data is not being updated. Or if it is being updated, we're not getting the, uh, the updates here. It only goes down to kernel, which is interesting. Also, I need to prevent making the file twice, which is what that does. <laughs> But it only made it once, so that's good. Maybe it overwrote the thing because it found it when it did open. But it should add it to the end of this list here, which is interesting. If I reboot, we should have the same stuff and reboot does not work. That's probably an issue. That might be from updating the, the super block though, I'm not sure. Super block disk sector. I mean, that's where it starts. That's where this is. What is this disk sector? Where's that at? I don't know where that's at. <laughs> Is 
on the bootloader. Mm. Is that in third stage? Maybe it's in somewhere. There's only so many files we can look through. All right. All right, grep, where are we at? <laughs> eight, it's at sector eight. Oh, in the file system, okay. And now I don't remember where I was at. <laughs> not, doing, not doing too well today. Not doing too well in the kernel. Really, I was only in the kernel. I was just in a separate spot. I think I was in here, create file, yeah. Let's go to the end, because that's where I was, right there. So we can update the current directory or the root directory or something, I guess. I don't see why we'd have to. But maybe if it's looking, well, if it's looking through the size and bytes, right? We, we probably do have to, actually. Because in print directory, we're going through the X tense. We're looking at the, direct, the directory size and bytes, and we're stopping when we print the total number of entries, correct? So that's when we're stopping printing. So if the current directory, either current or root, whatever we're printing, current would be root, but I guess if one of these two, which I guess would be current, because we're setting it to root, so we might have to update this as well. But if one of those two is not updated after we write a new file to it, then the size would not update. But when we print it out, it has the size, so I don't know. Oh, it has the size because it searches and gets the dot and dot dot directories, but before that point, where it's printing everything out, the overall file we're printing, the directory we're printing, has the old size before we added a new file. So it's probably off by 64, so that's why it doesn't print the last entry. So yeah, I think we probably do have to update current and or root whenever we make a file and probably make a directory later. So I can do that in here or in the open syscall or somewhere else. Probably would be better within here, this file, because that's where the, the variables are declared. So update super block, let's do that. Update current directory inode and root directory inode in case new file was added to either. And later when we do change directory, it should reload the current directory. So that should be okay. But when we're making a file, I guess I'll do these just in case. It'll be extra disk IO, but I mean, that's life, right? So I'll just do that. One, we'll start at first inode block times sectors per block. I should make sort of abstracted functions for this too, somehow. <laughs> so it's not, you know, read, update, write, because that's what I'm doing repeatedly for all this, reading sectors in, updating and writing them back. I should figure out some way, maybe through like a mem copy or mem set or something. Mem copy, probably. Give it like a buffer and a length and somewhere to load from and save to, and it, it can do that. And that would just reduce some lines of code over time. But it'd be effectively the same thing as I'm going to do here. Read a sector, write to it, and, and write it back. Well, that's all right. So we offset that from whatever inode we just did, right? No, the current directory inode, yeah. We do current um, directory inode.id divided by inodes per sector. Because I need to get the sector that this stuff starts at. And we'll put it in the temp sector. And read with retry. So read that to memory. We need to update the value there. I think I have temp inode. Yes, let's just put that. Doesn't matter. Do I have that at the top already? Okay, I do. That's good. Temp inode will be an inode t pointer to temp sector. 
and we'll offset by, this needs to be equal, not plus. Offset by our inode ID modulo inodes per sector. Because that'll get the right position for the inode within the sector. So we get that, and then the data at temp inode. Should be our current, should it not? But current's not being updated. Wait, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> We have the parent, that should be okay. I'm updating the inode blocks, so I'm updating on disk. Am I updating that for the new file? I mean, the directory is being updated. Set the inode bit, set next free. Update inode blocks for new file. Yeah, that's being updated. Okay, but we're just reading it through. We're not setting the current directory explicitly yet. Okay. Yeah, so I, okay, yeah, I would just read it then. I would read it to memory and then I would set the data there would be the data for current directory. So I could do um, current directory inode equals the data for temp inode because this would be pointing to where that should be on the disk. I guess that would be just in case this parent directory up here, this parent inode, is the temp. So we could have that check even here because we're writing it down. I could check if the IDs are the same. We could do that. That would be easier than reading and writing again. So let's, let's uh, do that because we're updating the file within the parent inode. So let's do that. So we could say if parent uh, inode ID is the current directory inode ID, then I want to update that. because the data on disk would be updated at this point, so we don't need to rewrite it to disk, we just need to update the value in memory here. I can also check the root. Which I named it root inode, yes, here. Oh, right there. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Parent equals that. We could say current equals parent, that would make more sense. Okay, hopefully that will change. Hopefully it'll make, that'll make it work. Because <laughs> if we do directory, we're printing from the current directory, which is also the root, but if we make a new file within that, that should update. Yeah, okay, and then it updates it. I don't think I wrote a date to it, I guess. The size is zero, that's correct. It's not a directory, but we have the file printing. It does not, it's not open anywhere, so the reference count is zero. Let's make that date happen. I should be adding the date to it in the inode blocks. So I don't like that that did not work. But this does update, so I like that this worked, because that's easier. I thought I'm adding the date time, am I not? I'm setting the last modified timestamp which should be the current timestamp. And that's what I'm doing for month, day, and year. The RTC should be going and working. I can verify that though, that's fair. And it doesn't boot after I add it, so that's bad as well. That might be from the super block. I should be able to boot after running it once. That is a bug. Yeah, let's just see. I think it's show date time, right? Ooh, actually it doesn't print anything. Ooh, maybe I don't have a uh, an RTC going. That's not good. It resumes immediately. So if I do millisecond sleep, it should work for one second, half a second, one second. 
Okay, so we should have an RTC going. Maybe the date is not correct. Or date time is not working. I love when stuff doesn't work. If not, we put it at 5030. That might not be on screen anymore. I'll just put it at 10. Or, um, yeah, 50 should be okay, actually, but... We'll, we'll make sure. 40 and 10. I'll do 30, 10. I don't know where I'm printing. So I guess that prints with an RTC, which is in the pick, and it's IRQ 0, 1, 2, 8. <laughs> I was like, it's in one of these. Yeah, 50, 30. So what I make that? 30 and 10? This needs to change, obviously. Change later to, you know, write somewhere else. So that's probably drawing off screen so it doesn't show up. Or it just doesn't draw at all, which is interesting. That's bad. Maybe these things don't work. Print deck and car and all that. Probably not. I mean, I should change that to like print F, right? Yeah. Going down the rabbit hole here. Really, I just want to see why it's not printing the timestamp, which it should be. Set the inode bit as in use for its ID. New inode ID divided by inodes per sector, modulo inodes per sector. Yes, we write that to the sector. Write with retry, so that should write it to disk. The date should be updated on disk at this point, but it's not, it looks like, for some reason. And in printing, it reads that timestamp. But again, that's also kind of related to updating the super block, which seems like that's buggy because it can't boot after it does this. So super block is up here. I'm writing eight at a time, which is probably not great. Starting at sector eight, is that correct? I don't think that's correct. The super block disk sector is not eight, actually. It's um the third one based indexing, the third um block on the disk. So actually this is not eight. This would start at um sixteen. Did I do that on like one of the last videos? Because that's not correct. <laughs> Sectors d zero to seven, zero to fifteen are for the boot block. I probably forgot that. That's okay. And that is because I don't have it on here, 16 to 33. First inode block, super block plus 12. Read in the boot block and the super block to memory, 15. So you have zero to seven for the boot block, <laughs> and you have eight to 15. Oh, eight to 15 should be the super block, Never mind. I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm getting, I'm confusing myself. Do we have these there? So it should be boot sector. Well, that's only one sector, yeah. And the second stage. So these two together should make up one block and then the boot. So it should be, yeah, it should be at eight then. That's fine. It's right after the boot block. I don't know then. Maybe the address is wrong at this point because we unmapped it, possibly. No, nah, it shouldn't be unmapped. That's only the kernel, which is at one meg. So that's still in memory, that's still identity mapped. I don't know why that doesn't work. Interesting. The super block address should be a full 4K. From 8C to 9C. We could just write one, you know, sector though, because the super block is only one sector. Oh, 
Well, it's less than a sector. So we should be able to write that. So I could change that and see what happens. Uh, from the disk sector, writing, we're writing one sector at the disk sector eight from the super block address. Otherwise, super block, we could make one sector in size, but that's fine. We're setting that data there at the address. We could just write one sector and see what happens. Really? Yeah, I'll have to debug why the date isn't showing up. So, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to go crazy trying to hunt this down for another few hours, and that's not good. So, um, my time is also wrong on here. I need to fix that. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got for this. I'm going to debug... I'm going to debug why the date doesn't show and see if I can find another bug or two to fix. But other than that, I mean, I got creating a file finally after like eight hours, however long this took, the last five, six videos, whatever. <laughs> it just takes me a while, I guess. I got that working. That's good. I'll try to get the, maybe the close system call or read, write, and seek. We can like make a, you know, fill out this example file dot text, add it to the build system or something. Just to have some example stuff there to test out open, close, read, write, and seek, and we'll make and change directories and stuff and get the file system working a little better. So I need to debug why this date isn't filled out and why I can't have a date show up. Probably something with pointers and things again or printing from the print deck and car, but I'll work out those things and we'll, we'll go on from there, so. All right, it was actually a pretty easy fix for the date time stuff. It came down to KVM being enabled in QEMU. I thought it made stuff faster, Maybe it does when I'm not recording. Maybe that adds some weird, you know, discrepancies there. But it does make the real-time clock very slow, albeit accurate, and disk accesses are slow. For me, when I enable KVM in this, if I don't do that, stuff's a bit faster uh, in running time, and, you know, the date time and everything works. I did change that to print a little bit, but, uh, you know, it works, and when I make a file, it will actually display... So see, it's writing it a lot faster. So I guess I'll go without enabling KVM now, although I thought it worked better before, but whatever. It does make the file, so that's good. If I do it again, it shouldn't make a new one. Okay, it still says created, but I guess it doesn't make a new one. That just means it returns successfully the way I have that now. But okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to change this really right quick where it prints the date to also print the time, just because I want to, you know, I'm interested in that now that I got the RTC working. A little bit better. And the new things I did was just changing that mainly. So I'll look at the kernel one first. Yeah, so instead of doing this when I'm showing the date time, I just commented that out and I'm saying, hey, I'm getting a new date time from the current timestamp function, which is in fsimple, and I'm just printing out 60s <laughs> for the year, month, day, hour, minute, second. So that's all I'm doing. And I'll probably rename this actually instead of. Uh, instead of show date time, I'll rename that up here. So I'm just going to say the, the Unix one is just date, but I'll call it date time. So I don't have to type as much. <laughs> we'll just say date time. And okay, let me change also the FS impl. This will just be a few minutes tacked on to the end of the previous part I did. So this is, I'm only going to be here for two minutes, keep in mind. The only new ones I did was... I don't remember. In the pick. <laughs> I do remember. So I added, I'm using printf to print date time, I guess. So I wanted to do that. So I added standard IO. And I had two conflicting date time t's. I had one date time t in this file for the pick. And then I have the file system one. So I'm just going to use the file system one because that's going to be standardized for me more so. So I'm just doing that. And yeah, so the date time info struct here. Which really, the only difference is I have like two bytes of padding down here explicitly for the file system one, but whatever. It's slightly different, so I'm just using that instead. Commenting out that one, and I made this fs underscore date time t, you know, for this declaration here. Okay, same thing for this, the new and old date time, or fs date time t's, instead of just date time t's. And those were the only changes I did. So I might change this stuff down here to not print on the screen. Or maybe I will. I don't know. I need, I need to find a better way to change. I did change these values, but 
I need to find a better way to just write to the lower right and continuously do that, maybe on a separate thread or something later on. So right now I'm just not going to worry about this. And we won't worry about showing the date time. I'm just going to, you know, print it. The user can print it when they want. And that's fine. I'll just comment that out for now. Yeah, I'm just going to comment this out. It'd be shorter anyway if we changed the printf. So that's fine. I'll just set the values here. That'll be less that we're doing there. And then this, uh, this variable we're not using anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. And I probably don't need standard IO then at this point from that. Why, why is that not happening? Oh, in the kernel. Yeah, in the kernel, I'm not doing that anymore. That's true. Enable CMOS. We're not doing that anymore. All right, so that should still work here. And we'll open a thing. We'll print the directory again. So if I do show date time, that's not a thing. But date time should just print that. There we go. I'll probably print it on the next line anyway. But that's good. Yeah, let's just print it on the next line just in case we'll do that. Okay, so when I make the file, fs impl, fs create file, we're adding the date time to it. So I wanna change where we print it actually to just print out the full thing here. I'll do the standard ISO fare like I was doing there. So day, day da, or uh, year, <laughs> four digit year, dash month, dash day, and then hour, colon, minutes, colon, second. I don't think seconds matter too much for this, but I guess we can do that anyway. That's fine. Not SD. We have day, month, year. And we'll have hour, minutes, and seconds. And the size and that. Okay. Very simple things. I like when I can do simple changes and not have to think through and debug my crap for five years. So yeah, 420 and leet time. I thought that was funny. I could make the digits two digits, but that would be with um, the printf changes. If I do like a width, like a percent two D would, you know, fill out to two digits. So that could be something I look into after I get the, you know, the other file system stuff done or beforehand if I want this to print better. But I'm just glad that we can make a new file and it works. So that should update to my local time that I fixed. For some reason, my cron jobs every day don't work, even though my cron daemon is working, but whatever. If we make it again, I don't think it will overwrite that. Should have the same one. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I can mess around with open some more that we can make files, but I'll probably go on to the closed system call, maybe rewrite seek, if not making and changing directories for the next ones, as I probably said before. So I'm just tacking this on to the end of the last thing. Uh, so if this is the end of the video I end up going with and not the other one, then that's why this is a little awkward. But thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. We'll get to more directory stuff or changing printf to have fixed widths and left right adjust for digits and things. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Do, doing more read, write, and seek. And then we'll get on with maybe some other default file system things and set up documentation maybe or testing or a help command and other random stuff that I get to. But that's what I'm working on right now. Eventually processes and then on to a UEFI 64 bit in the future. I'm hoping not too far past the beginning of next year, but at the time of recording, this is what I'm doing. So yeah. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And yeah, so if I didn't do it before, I'll do it and do it now. And uh yeah, cheers. Aguas muy bueno. Vada, uh, ocean, kharasho. Is that is that right? Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll see you later.